Rheumatoid arthritis is estimated to affect up to 1% of the entire population. It is painful and often debilitating, talking inflammation in the joints, the likes of which, unless you have it, sometimes you just can't believe. And the flare-ups with RA seem to come out of nowhere. What triggers them? Oftentimes, it's a mystery. And that is what researchers at the Physicians Committee wanted to figure out. And today we're joined by one of the lead researchers of a brand new groundbreaking study that analyzes the effect of diet on rheumatoid arthritis. We welcome the Director of Clinical Research for the Physicians Committee, Dr. Hanna Kaliova. Dr. Kaliova, thanks for being back here. Thanks for having me, Chuck. So good to see you again. Yeah, so good to be here. Oftentimes when you're on the show, we talk about diabetes, but today we're talking about RA. And the thing that I know about RA is that when I said it was painful just a minute ago, mm-hmm. I've seen people just literally crippled over and crippled over and had their days just ruined by it. So when we're talking about pain and RA, I mean, how painful is this condition? Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, like it affects the small joints in the hands, in the wrists, the knees, but also other joints in the body. And they're not only painful, but also swollen. Uh, and eventually, over the course of many years of the disease, uh, there may be a permanent damage. So it may be a disabilitating disease also, uh, you know, a big cause of a disability. Uh, so um, this, this is no fun. Uh, we know that there's genetic factors, but also environmental factors. Uh, and, uh, you know, among the factors that we can influence, um, diet seems to be one of them. Uh, it's an autoimmune condition, which means that, that it may be triggered by certain proteins. Um, and that's why you know, we were trying to figure out, you know, if we modified the diet, could we, um, could we help these people with their pain and with their swollen joints? And that's exactly why uh, we conducted a a clinical trial. And let me share my screen with you and just tell you a little bit about the study. Yeah, by all means. And we see the screen up on there right now. Wonderful. Uh, So uh, we were looking into the effects of a plant-based diet for rheumatoid arthritis. uh, And the findings have just been published uh, in the American Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. uh, And... Uh, you know, when uh, when people come in with their joint pain, uh, I need to say not all joint pain is due to rheumatoid arthritis. So in our study, we had a rheumatologist who verified the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, he was also making sure to, to do the counts of the joints and Uh, all the assessments that rheumatologists do uh, without knowing uh, which group the participants were in, both at baseline and then uh, then at midpoint and then at the end of the study. We recruited 44 people with rheumatoid arthritis and they were randomly assigned to either uh, the diet phase or the supplement phase. Uh, for 16 weeks. And then after the 16 weeks were over, we reassessed their joint pain and we were using questionnaires and also the rheumatologist met with them and uh, we drew their labs. Uh, And after a four week washout period uh, for four week of a break, Um, they switched over to the opposite uh, intervention. So those who were on the diet previously um, went on a supplement and those who were on a supplement went on the diet for another 16 weeks. And then we did all the final assessments again. Now, um, let me describe the diet. What, What exactly was the diet about? Uh, For the first four weeks, It was a low-fat vegan diet. That means no animal products, no meat, no dairy, no cheese, no eggs for four weeks. Then for another three weeks, on the top of eliminating all the animal foods, we also eliminated uh, certain plant foods 
for example, gluten-containing grains, soy foods, uh, and certain vegetables and fruits. Uh, and for the last nine weeks, we were reintroducing the eliminated foods one by one back into the diet. And if the reintroduced foods didn't cause any problems, uh, the participants just kept them in the diet and kept adding new and new foods. However, if, let's say, introducing potatoes back to the diet caused a lot of joint pain and, uh, you know, the joints were swollen again, then the potato was just out of the diet again and we were testing other foods which provided each participant with individualized food triggers that would cause the, the joint pain and, and swelling. Uh, here's the list of all the eliminated foods on the elimination diet. So in addition to eliminating all the animal foods uh, during the, uh, after four weeks, during the subsequent three weeks, we, we excluded all the gluten containing grains uh, some vegetables such as potatoes and sweet potatoes and onions and tomatoes and eggplants and celery. Uh, only a couple of fruits such as apples and bananas and citrus fruit, uh, nuts and peanuts, uh, soy foods and chickpea, and also chocolate, coffee, sugar, alcohol and nutritional yeast. So these foods were eliminated for three weeks and then they were reintroduced one by one. Every two days, the participants added an, another food from this, from this elimination diet list. Now, the disease activity measured by the DAS28 score, uh, which is one of the, the major uh, rheumatologist assessments, um, didn't change significantly on the supplement or which was a placebo uh, but was reduced substantially uh, during the diet uh, by 2.1 points um, and i need to say that we also did another analysis looking at people who increased their medications uh, during the study when we excluded them, we, we got similar results. And also when we took participants with no medication changes uh, whatsoever during the study and left only them, then uh, the results were comparable as well. Uh, and another significant finding from the study was the number of swollen joints, uh, which was reduced by 3.7 uh, during the diet phase and didn't change significantly on the placebo. Uh, so uh, in conclusion, it looks like uh, the elimination plant-based diet really worked for rheumatoid arthritis and uh, can be definitely tried out. If you have rheumatoid arthritis, I'd like to encourage you to give it a try. Uh, and we will post the whole um, uh, the whole paper with the list of the foods that that were eliminated on the elimination diet so that you can you can do it yourself. Those are really oh. fascinating results, Dr. Kaliova. Um, it, what was your hypothesis going into this? I mean, we know that plant-based diets by and large are anti-inflammatory. So mm -hmm. was it your suspicion that this probably would be helpful to a lot of these study participants? Yeah, exactly. Our thought was, let, let's try out how a plant-based diet can help these people. We know uh, that plant-based diets in general are anti-inflammatory. Um, but then also we realize that there are certain triggers beyond the animal foods that are excluded from, from the plant-based plant diet. That's why we also included the elimination phase. Uh, unfortunately, the individual foods that need to be in, eliminated in, in, uh, in each single uh, person, uh, they completely different from one person to another. Uh, so there is no way how to predict whether a person will be reacting to a potato or a tomato uh, or an apple or onion. Uh, every person just needs to try these foods out. 
Uh, so, so, so one part one part is eliminating all the animal products and most participants reported significant improvements of, of their joint pain even after the first four weeks. Uh, but there was still some remaining pain in some of the participants and that's where the elimination diet came into play. Interesting. Uh, I find it really interesting how wide of a variation there was as, mm. as far as the trigger food. So what you're saying is it, you, you can't exactly say that, wow, you know, uh, fruits are more likely to be triggers or potatoes, mm. as you said, or onions or whatever the case may be. You can't say any of that is more likely to be a trigger than another food. Do, you, do we have any sort of understanding as to why it varies so widely from person to person? Uh our body, it's an autoimmune condition uh, and it's triggered by certain proteins. Uh, and it also depends on uh, your genetic um, background and also your early, early life exposures. So let's say people who were not breastfed and where cow's milk was introduced early, early in life. Uh, they may react to dairy much stronger than a person who was breastfed, for example. Um, you know, there's different uh, there's different foods that are being introduced in, in into the diet in the early life, and some of them just turn out to be to be triggers. Uh, it's it's also the case with meat and um, with eggs. You know, the the earlier the exposure in life, the higher the probability that the body will uh, be reacting to these foods later in life. Uh, so that's also um, stressing a point for all all mothers, <laughs> you know, who have small babies, to be really careful about the diet of their babies. Uh, you know, make sure they breastfeed them long enough and also that they introduce foods that are uh, not not uh, any of these triggers too early in, in life. And I'm looking at the list of foods that were part of the elimination diet. There were three in particular that stood out to me that I'm like, hmm, I wonder if some mm -hmm. people had a hard time eliminating these completely. I'm talking about coffee. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking about sugar and I'm talking about chocolate. Were, did any of the participants say, hey, look, Dr. Kaliova, <laughs> this is like so hard to take out of my life? Absolutely. There were a few people who were like, how am I going to survive without my coffee? <laughs> but they did it. You know, you can you can do everything if you put your mind to it. Like uh, going through the elimination diet gave the, the study participants unique information for the rest of their life. Let's say, um, you know, you're you're experiencing some pain in your joints, Chuck, and you don't know where the pain is coming from. And someone will tell you, you know, let's let's figure it out. Uh, over the next 16 weeks, we will know exactly what triggers your pain. Uh, then you might be up for that, <laughs> you know, and you want you might be willing to eliminate all your sugar and coffee. Uh, the the strict elimination phase was only for three weeks. Um, so, you know, it's not too bad. And also eliminating chocolate doesn't mean eliminating the, cho the chocolate taste. And eliminating sugar doesn't mean eliminating the sweet taste either. Uh, so there's ways how, how you can uh, somehow, you know, make it work. So, okay. So when you're talking about sugar, are we just talking about added refined sugar yeah, or? We, okay. And, and so, but the fruits that were not on that elimination list. They they could still freely eat as much as they wanted. Exactly. So berries and and grapes, for example, they can they 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 were able to eat as much as they wanted. All right. Well, that's a sweet relief right there. That's yep. not too bad. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And and how confident are we, given the fact that this is an autoimmune disorder, that mm -hmm. uh, other autoimmune disorders might also see the same type of benefit? I mean, obviously they're they're all a little bit different, but you know, so we've got RA here, another autoimmune disorder, say like Sjogren's syndrome or something like that. Mm -hmm. are, are we confident that uh, you know, looking at a nutritional intervention might also prove helpful for those other conditions? 
Uh, it might. We just don't have the exact information, uh, and some some studies need to be conducted. Uh, we're currently uh, running a study for people with type one diabetes, which is also an autoimmune condition. So see how we can help these people with uh, with a with a diet, um, you know, and if if that can make a difference in their life also. And what uh, final question? I mean, what was the takeaway for the participants? I mean, was it really kind of eye opening for them if they saw real positive results? Like, wow, I've been looking for something like this my entire life, and now, oh my goodness, it's it's not medicine, it's not this, it's not that, it's it's food. Food seems to be kind of like something that can really help me out here. Was there a lot of surprise among them? Absolutely, for the first time in their life. Uh, you know, they saw relief by something as simple as a, as nutrition. And, you know, most of them were super grateful for this experience because that informed them for the rest of their life. Dr. Kaliova, medicine woman. I love it. You always bring the knowledge. So mm -hmm. today is, is no different. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much, Chuck. If your health IQ was a couple of points higher than it was a few minutes ago, go ahead and like this video or subscribe to the YouTube channel. And to take it even higher, head over to Apple Podcast or wherever you get your favorite shows. Look for the exam room by the Physicians Committee. Hit the subscribe button there as well and help to make your world a healthier place.